So today I'm here with Tanya and Karen to talk about our mRNA journey. Tanya, thank you so much for the, the tour of the lab and manufacturing um, facilities. Really great to see all the capabilities that we have. I'd love to start with the story of our early days of the journey of mRNA. So would you mind sharing with us those days? Yeah, so indeed, we started 20 years ago, unbelievable. So out of our site in Schaffhausen, we produced lipids for customers already 20 years ago. That was a small business those days. Um, but then in the year 2018, 2019, we started to invest in mRNA truck delivery. So the idea was to combine our chemical knowledge with the biology and to take this to innovate. So um, beside that, we also had a program for synthetic cholesterol. And it was, well, when the crisis hit us, then we were really ready to launch that product within eight months. So really in a short period of time. That's incredible. During the pandemic, obviously that topic got a little bit of uh, focus. We know that. So we were further investing in mRNA truck substance manufacturing. We acquired the company Amtech in 2021 and further invested in a fully scalable GMP ready process out of Hamburg and Darmstadt, as you saw in our facility. And then in 2022, added the capabilities of Exolite, another acquisition where we can now fully scale and produce lipid nanoparticles. These are the packaging systems um, in Exolite Indianapolis. So today we have the whole mRNA value chain from mRNA truck substance, lipids, early formulation screening service, LNP upscaling and GMP manufacturing fill and finish. Really impressive to hear all the capability and the journey we've, we've had. But eight months to deliver a product at that volume is, is quite an accomplishment. I mean, Karen, from your perspective, how did we do that? Well, so uh, it's having the right capabilities in the right place at the right time. And then you throw on top of it the need in the global pandemic. And I think one thing um, that history has shown us over and over again is that if you have a global crisis, whether it be a financial one or in this case, a global pandemic, you're able to innovate at a very rapid pace and do great things. And, it, and, and, and it's the meaning behind the common saying that necessity is the mother of innovation. And it was certainly true in this case. Uh, but I think the other real sort of secret ingredient in it too was just the real shared sense of purpose that we had, right? In, in trying to solve this incredibly you know, challenging problem. And it brought people together. It broke down silos. It allowed us to collaborate at a very rapid pace and that was really critically important in bringing all the pieces together to solve this problem. Yes, so really to add on that, uh, in those days of COVID, it was really difficult to find the right capabilities for regulatory QC, QA, analytics. And in our company, we have all these capabilities from a bioprocess perspective. So we could grab all these capabilities, regulatory, QC, QA, analytical capabilities and not to forget all of our products we have, you know, filtration, single use components. These are all very critical parts and pieces we could just put together like a puzzle. I love this story because it, it speaks to the purpose that we have as a company really to serve customers and patients the best the best that we can. And so I'm, I'm curious to hear at, now that COVID is on the, the other side and mRNA has been kind of a, a common word. Even my mother knows um, the term mRNA. Where do we go from here? What, Karen, what do you see as, as next on the roadmap? Yeah, I, I think what has everybody so incredibly excited is the potential of this new modality to go beyond vaccines, beyond infectious disease, and, and to treat um, a whole wide range of indications, oncology, rare diseases, inflammatory diseases, you name it. Um, and now customers and you know the original companies plus a whole bunch more are filling up and building a very robust pipeline of all of these molecules and they're making their way through preclinical and clinical trials now. So hugely exciting about the potential impact of this, this novel modality. But to do that, 
We need to innovate. We need the next generation of mRNA and the lipid nanoparticle te technologies. And that's what we're doing. We're continuing to innovate. And, and we have, and as you know, we've established some programs uh, along with, um, in collaboration with Tanya's group, the Blue House program, uh, where we're developing these next generation of targeted nanoparticles and, and new designs to enable these new indications. So the future is very bright. Thank you so much for taking the time. I love this story because I think it brings together a couple key things that we see for that are critical for innovation. First of all, the journey starts with some single steps and I think it started in this case with Schaffhausen and the lipid synthesis capability, which was really the starting point for our overall development and advancement. And then the collaboration along the way, either with customers in those early days, the, the thought leaders, um, and then later bringing in acquisitions, other partners to really come to, to create this end-to-end -end capability. Um, so I think this is such a great example of the power of our company of coming together to really solve a, a problem. And honestly, I'm so excited to see what comes next.